America is filled with people who think that those on welfare are lazy. Now, they'd probably use other adjectives as well, but in this final judgment, we're going to focus on the idea of it being lazy, of it making you lazy, of it making you work less or perhaps not even work at all when you're on some form of welfare program. Let's look at some data. A recent study from MIT and Harvard economists reanalyzed data from seven randomized experiments evaluating cash programs in poor countries and found no systematic evidence that cash transfer programs discourage work. Exactly zero of the seven programs saw statistically significant change in either employment levels or hours worked per week. So we're talking about multiple different countries, multiple different contexts, multiple different sorts of cash transfer programs of one form or another, and across all seven of them, with the most rigorous statistical analysis possible from some of the smartest minds in America, they found that it did not statistically significantly lower the amount of work or the chance that people will be employed. Now, that doesn't mean that it didn't lower it at all, so let's look at the actual numbers. The 95% confidence interval for how the programs affected the employment rate ranged from a 1.6% point decline to a 0.9% point increase. So it either very marginally lowered it, or in some of them it might have actually encouraged more work for whatever reason. We can sort of uh, do some speculation about why that might be. Now, as I said, there, is some, there are some theories outside of this MIT and Harvard analysis that the cash transfer programs can actually lead to more work, higher wages, a higher chance of being employed. So let's talk about some of those. One paper evaluated a program that gave crash, cash grants $382 per person on average to groups of young, unemployed Ugandans to help them learn skilled trades and found that hours of work rose by about 17% and earnings by 38%. Another paper by Blattman, Eric Green, Julian Jamison, and Jeanine uh, Anan looked at a program in Nigeria that gave about $150 and some basic business skills training to women in northern Uganda. Work hours increased by 61%. Now, this is obviously a program that's focused on establishing business skills, uh, job training, and things of that sort, which coincidentally, many welfare programs in America are also designed uh, to accomplish. And many of the, the subsidies that we provide to students and things like that are designed to make these people more likely to be able to get jobs in the future. Uh, alternative programs are designed to help those people not starve while working in those early jobs to then go on to greater careers uh, later on. And now you might think, okay, well, they're talking about they're talking about Nigeria, Uganda. That's nothing like America. Well, then let's talk about something a little bit closer to home. An experiment in Canada where an entire town got a guaranteed income by way of a negative income tax found even milder reductions in work, and then only with new mothers who spent longer at home with their newborns and teenagers. So that is a little bit more radical of a program. It's not something that's really being proposed seriously in America. The idea of a guaranteed income. Where now it's not just you give some money to people who are poor. Everybody gets money from the government. They find uh, that only new mothers who will then choose to stay at home with their newborns actually work a little bit less. And teenagers, and I would argue that the teenagers perhaps focusing more on preparing for college and the mothers bond bonding a little bit more with their kids is probably worth it. And so look, I have no doubt that the claims that welfare encourages laziness or dependence will continue despite this final judgment. But if they do continue, they'll do so without the data to back them up. And that's my final judgment.